Good day, fellow investors. In this video, we are going to discuss real estate investing, REITs, real estate investment trusts in the United States, and normal immobilian stocks in Europe. And I want to give you the key factors that you have to watch for when it comes to investing into such vehicles. And also, we'll make a quick stock analysis, example stock analysis of Ka Immobilien, which is a European Austrian real estate investor vehicle. Now, before we start, let me just give you an example of what real estate investing is by calling my father. Hi, Dad. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Now, do you remember the 6,000 square meter woodland that you have there up in the hills in the middle of nowhere that's practically worthless? Or let's say one euro per square meter. Yes, how many meters? 6,000. All right, all right. Well, that would be 6,000 euros, right? Let me make you 30,000 euros in a second. How? Well, I think it's worth 6 euros per square meter. What do you think about that? Oh, no, thank. So you're happy, you're proud of your son. I just make you, made you 30,000 euros just by revaluating re the property. You want to sell it? Oh, I'm losing connection. Sorry, dad, dad, what? And this is how real estate investing works in most REITs. And you have to pick whether you want to invest into real estate revaluations or you want to invest in cash flows. Investors invest in cash flows. Speculators invest in real estate value appreciation that will continue unlimited for an unlimited time like it was the case for the last 30 years and more than that because before 1982 we had high inflation and since 1982 we had interest rates that went from 15 percent down to zero interest rates low interest rates high real estate prices and that's what we are going to also discuss in this video let's start with the analysis and the key factors to watch so when it comes to investing in real estate or real estate vehicles, we're going to discuss the example. Rental yields are what investors focus on. The spread, if they can borrow at 1.5%, like Kaimo can, the rent yield is 5%. Appreciation, real estate values should go up, but there is also depreciation, 2%, non-cash costs that lowers your taxes, should be also inflation protections and then on there, there we have REITs and real estate stocks and you have to see how what fits your investment strategy. So funds from operations this is what investors focus on so for this company funds for operations after taxes after anything the real value in cash that has been added to your investment value was 1.31 in 2019 and 1.20 in 2018. So there was a growth of 10%. Okay, higher leases probably. Again, leveraged. So if you increase the lease 5%, the debt step stays the same, then this is a 10% growth. And this is the focus if you want to invest in. If we look at this stock, the stock price is 30 almost 29 euros so 1.1 1.2 1 1.3 earnings per share gives you a 4 4 point something 4.4 percent earnings yield and as they pay out that they give a dividend yield of 3.46 percent but then you will say Sven you're saying a 4.4 earnings yield that would be a price earnings ratio of 20 20 something not the price earnings ratio of 6.4 Four. Well, that's something we'll discuss because there is something that's called revaluations that come into the picture. Let's go forward. These are the revaluations that we are going to discuss. Earnings from rental income were 1.3 per share. Net income per share were 4.23 euros. Where does that income per share come we have net rent rental income 194 million in 2019 then we have result from revaluation 462 million in 2019 financing costs all the other costs the actual financial result is 94.4 million negative but when you 
add to the revaluation, the consolidated net income is 3.9 free. This is including all the costs and everything, and also depreciations that is not a cash cost. But 400 million in net income reported, which leads to the price earnings ratio of 6.4 on the stock price, but the actual cash created for shareholders was 1.3. So this is something you have to be very careful when investing in real estate or REITs, vehicles, that seemingly give you higher earnings than what is the reality. And you have to choose whether you're focused on revaluation, constant future revaluation, or on other things like cash flows. Also the value as the revaluations are there of almost half a million, half a billion per year, it's easy to pump up the gross asset value. But then again, it is about what you focus on. Just saying that something is more valuable doesn't mean that you can also sell it for that price. And here we have uh, income, the revaluation gain again with accounting, this revaluation gain is not taxed, that's why you can always do it, because it's taxed only if you sell it and the gain is realized. This is an unrealized gain and therefore not taxable. There, It increases your earnings per share here, 4.23. It looks good, your fundamentals look great when you do the revaluations, but if it has no impact on real investing income. So when it comes to investing in real estate vehicles, it's actually the same as investing in a normal single unit that you are the total owner. The key is to look at the leverage. What is the leverage? What are the payments? What are the tenants paying? What is the rent? What is the average occupancy? Can you survive a year without getting rent? And their average, in this case for car immobilian, is 95% occupancy now, if there is a crisis, a longer crisis in Europe, the occupancy will be lower. And that's something you have to deal with. And then the actual question is, am I, if you want to invest in such investments, am I happy when owning these businesses, these buildings with that leverage, paying the management in this case so that I don't have to bother for a 3.4% yield, or I can look for other real estate investment options if I want real estate exposure. So this is the analysis, funds from operations 1.31, the stock is around 30, the business yield is 4.4% of which they pay out what 75%, 3.4% dividend yield in a good economic environment as we are talking in 2019. We later discuss the COVID exposure. So. Then looking at tenants and stability, if we look at the top tenants, I think there are many, many tenants here that you recognize. So they are well diversified, which also means that in case of economic crisis, some of their tenants will go bankrupt, will cancel their leases, lower the leases. So this is all good. But then if there is less economic activity, this can revert very fastly and we can see what happened here, 2007 to 2009, the stock fell 90%. Then it exploded again, thanks to stimulus. But this can also happen when you invest in leveraged REITs. And it depends on how much risk you are willing to take. Because when those revaluations have to be reverted, then the company has huge losses, cannot pay a dividend, has to cover their leverage ratios, has to cut the dividend, everybody is selling in panic that it will go bust, occupancy rates go up, and this is the ugly scenario. Over the last 10 years, we have seen mostly the nice scenario, but keep in mind, this can always come when investing in real estate vehicles. So am I the happy owner? What's the real value? They say they have a defensive capital structure, but they have 2.5 billion in long-term loans. On the value, they say 5 billion, but what do I know? That's just an opinion, can be 3 billion. The more leverage, the more risk. Even if the leverage has a ridiculous interest rates of 1.5, 6%, which is nothing compared to the average yield of 4, 5% they are getting from the rents. This spread 
is where they reach high returns on equity because they borrow at 1.5 and they rent out at 4 or more. So really put yourself into the owner's perspective. No matter what kind of real estate vehicle you are investing, is it your own property or a REIT or a holding with a lot of properties? Am I happy to hold that? How does it fit my portfolio? Let's look at the leverage. What can go wrong? What if the occupancy decreases? What commercial real estate are usually riskier than other real estate? So companies can move, stop paying rent. With people, it's a little bit more delicate. So you have to see what am I owning and then compare it also to the opportunity of owning a private home, leveraging with the banks, depending on the situation in your country and seeing how what fits your portfolio. After all, it's always about you. So this is part of my full research on uh, the Austrian stock market. So Imo 3.4 dividend yield. I also researched Atos Immobilien. And if you go to my website, wait a second, whoop, can you sign up to my newsletter? If you go to my website, if you go to my blog, I recently published about seven of eight articles on Austrian stocks. Uh, here is the, also the Atos Immobilien stock analysis. If you want to own housing in liens, less leveraged, her less revaluation, similar dividends, so probably a bit safer even if the market cap is microscopic. Nevertheless, here you have all my Austria stock exchange analysis, also for those who want more stock analysis. So Austria stock exchange, the Austrian stock market is the third cheapest stock market in the world according to Star Capital. So we decided to make a full stock analysis except for financing and bank and you can click here on the research related i will publish ka immobilien today probably when the video comes out so you can also read what you want and also we have the research of atos immobilien and then you can see how what fits your portfolio you have nice 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 reports here from these ones i'll pick one i have already picked one from my covered stock lists which is something you can follow on my stock market research platform if you want to learn more about investing educational videos and uh, written articles please sign into my free always will be free stock market investing course and of course subscribe to this channel looking forward to your comments and i'll see you in the next video